The Baghdad Battery, also known as the Parthian Battery, is a fascinating artifact from ancient history. It was discovered in the 1930s near Baghdad, Iraq, and dates back to the Parthian period, roughly 150 BC to 223 AD. The battery consists of a clay jar, a copper cylinder, and an iron rod, leading some researchers to speculate that it might have been used as an ancient electric battery. The jar is about 13 centimeters tall and contains the copper cylinder, which holds an iron rod in the center. When the jar was filled with an acidic liquid like vinegar or lemon juice, it could produce a small electric charge. This led to the hypothesis that the Baghdad battery may have been used to electroplate objects, create small electric shocks, or serve as part of a ritual. However, the purpose and authenticity of the Baghdad battery as an actual battery are still debated. Some scientists argue that it could have been used for storage or other non-electrical purposes, as no evidence of electroplating from the time period has been found. The Eolipile, also known as Hero's Engine, is an ancient steam-powered device created by the Greek engineer Hero of Alexandria in the first century AD. Often considered the world's first steam engine, it consisted of a hollow metal sphere mounted on a pivot. When water inside the sphere was heated, steam escaped through angled nozzles, causing the sphere to spin rapidly. Though it was a brilliant display of steam power, the Eolipile was seen mainly as a curiosity, or toy in ancient times, rather than a practical engine. However, it marked an early step in harnessing steam energy, a concept that wouldn't fully develop until the Industrial Revolution centuries later. Starlight Egg Invented in 1986 by Maurice Ward, Starlight was a special plastic that could withstand over 10,000 degrees Celsius and would not release toxic gases or smoke. While the exact formula was taken to his grave, this substance was based on a combination of approximately 21 polymers and copolymers with added ceramics. Allegedly, its strength and durability also increased when under stress. This substance appeared in BBC's Tomorrow's World in 1990, where an egg was coated in the substance and blasted with a 1,200 degrees torch. Not only did starlight protect the egg, but the internal temperature never rose about 35 degrees Celsius, and the egg was still raw. Not even high-powered lasers or simulated nuclear flashes could destroy the material, and very quickly, the inventor had investors calling him to try to capitalize on his invention. Worried that this material would end up in the wrong hands, Mr. Ward was adamant that he would maintain a 51% control of the projects and wanted to make sure that no one could reverse engineer Starlight. Ward passed away in 2011, with no agreements being made. Starlight may be lost to the world. However, Ward alleged that some of his immediate family knew the recipe, so there is always the chance we will see large-scale use of the material in the future. Flexible glass. There is very little that can be verified about the flexible glass or vitrium flexile allegedly created during Tiberius Caesar's reign of the Roman Empire. However, there are very interesting historical anecdotes that may lend credibility to this tale. A glassmaker presented the emperor with unbreakable glass, demonstrating its durability by denting and repairing it. Fearing it would devalue gold and silver, the emperor had the glassmaker executed to keep the invention a secret. According to speculations, if the Roman glassmaker had somehow obtained boric acid or borax, both of which are naturally occurring materials, the ending product would be relatively unbreakable. The Rife Machine. Imagine if we could tune into an illness the way a radio tunes into a station. That's the concept behind the Rife Machine, created in the 1930s by Dr. Royal Raymond Rife. He theorized that every bacteria, virus, or parasite vibrates at a specific frequency, like a fingerprint in energy form. Rife's machine aimed to detect and tune into these frequencies, amplifying them to a level that would supposedly disrupt the pathogens and eliminate them much like a high-pitched sound can shatter glass. The Pascaline. The Pascaline was one of the first mechanical calculators invented by French mathematician and philosopher Blaise Pascal in 1642. It was designed to help Pascal's father, who was a tax collector, perform arithmetic calculations more efficiently. The Pascaline could add and subtract numbers directly and perform multiplication and division through repeated addition or subtraction. It used a series of interlocking gears and wheels, with each wheel representing a digit. When one wheel completed a full rotation, it would advance the next wheel by one, allowing for precise calculations up to eight digits. The Pascaline was a pioneering device in the history of computing and is considered a precursor to modern calculators. The Archimedes Heat Ray is an ancient death ray concept attributed to the Greek mathematician and inventor Archimedes, according to legend, 
He used a series of polished bronze mirrors to focus sunlight into a powerful beam, aiming it at enemy ships during the siege of Syracuse around 212 BCE. Supposedly, this concentrated light created intense heat, setting the ships on fire and thwarting the Roman invasion. Though it sounds like something from science fiction, the concept has intrigued people for centuries. Modern scientists and history enthusiasts have tried to recreate the heat ray with varying degrees of success. Some experiments show it's possible to ignite wood with large, well-angled mirrors on a sunny day. The pneumatic tube system is a method of transporting small lightweight items through a network of tubes using compressed air or vacuum. It works by placing items usually inside cylindrical carriers into a tube network where they are propelled by air pressure or vacuum allowing fast delivery across distances within a building or between nearby locations. Historically, these systems were used widely in banks, hospitals, offices, and postal services to quickly send documents, cash, lab samples, and other materials. Although less common today, pneumatic tubes are still used in some hospitals for rapid transport of medical samples and medications. The Iron Lung The Iron Lung was a life-saving machine invented in the 1920s designed to help people breathe when they couldn't do so on their own, think of it as a gigantic, tube-like machine that someone would lie inside, with only their head sticking out. Its job was to create a vacuum that made the chest expand and contract, simulating the natural process of breathing. The Enigma Machine The Enigma Machine was a fascinating, complex encryption device used mainly by the Germans during World War II to send secret messages Imagine it like an ultra-complicated typewriter that could transform a clear message into a cryptic one, almost impossible to decode without the right settings. Each letter pressed on the Enigma would light up a different letter on the machine, creating a scrambled message that only someone with another Enigma machine and the exact same settings could unscramble. But mathematicians, including the famous Alan Turing, cracked the code by creating an early computer that could test thousands of Enigma settings quickly. Their breakthrough gave the Allies insight into German plans, turning the tide of the war. The Ogles Carburetor In the early 1970s, Roy J. Ogles, an American inventor, claimed to have created a carburetor that could dramatically increase a vehicle's fuel efficiency, some said by as much as 100%. At a time of rising gas prices and fuel shortages, such an invention was revolutionary. It promised to make cars run twice as far on the same amount of gas. Sparking the interest of drivers and car manufacturers alike, Roy Ogles' carburetor worked differently than standard ones. He focused on breaking down fuel into incredibly fine particles before mixing it with air, which theoretically allowed for a more complete combustion. Standard carburetors of the time were good at blending fuel and air, but not with such fine precision. This atomization process, Ogles argued, would reduce waste, boost power, and stretch fuel much further than conventional carburetors could. The invention gained attention from car enthusiasts, engineers, and even government bodies who wanted to test it. Yet despite the initial excitement, the Ogles carburetor never saw mass production. Some attribute this to the powerful influence of the oil industry, which may have viewed such a device as a threat to their profits. Greek fire, essentially a primitive form of napalm, originated in Greece, but was used to great effect in naval battles during the Byzantine Empire. This was because it could not only float on top of the water, but was also difficult to extinguish by using water. The secrets of manufacture and deployment were so closely guarded that even today we are unsure how it functioned. While the formula has been the predominant area of study, it is thought that the storage and pressurized delivery system played a huge role in its ignition and functionality. Damascus Steel This term is used nowadays for a wide variety of pattern-welded forged steel products. However, Historically speaking, Damascus steel was discovered long ago and was used to make swords in the Middle East. Stories allege that these swords could cut through rocks or could even completely shear another blade. But what made this steel so special? The exact process they used is still unclear. The exceptionally strong fictional Valyrian steel, mentioned in George R. R. Martin's book series A Song of Ice and Fire, as well as its television adaptation Game of Thrones, have been inspired by Damascus steel, but with a magic twist. Slute Coding System in the mid to late 90s, a Dutch electronics engineer devised a data storage method that could hold a full-length film in 8 kilobytes of data. 
Most modern techniques still require much more data to store a regular movie, HD films even more. Despite the impossibility of this system, it quickly attracted investors and Jan Sloot, the inventor, presented his system to Roll Peeper from Philips. Later that year, Peeper left Philips to join Sloot's company. Unfortunately, just days before Sloot was to release the source code, he was found dead in his garden from an apparent heart attack. While tragic, this would not have stopped the investors from perusing the technology. There was just one small problem. A key piece of the project was housed on a floppy disk in Sloot's possession, and after his death, they were never able to recover it, despite searching for months. Wilhelm Reich's Cloudbuster in the 1950s, William Reich created a pseudoscientific device called a Cloudbuster. This device allegedly manipulated an energy called orgone energy to affect the atmosphere and change weather patterns. Allegedly, this device was used on a farm in 1953 and was proven to work when it called down rain. The organ energy was also used to create devices for medicinal use. However, the FDA decided it served no medical purpose and more than likely provided a placebo effect after interviewing physicians for years. In March of 1954, the FDA ordered that all accumulators, parts, and instructions be destroyed, as well as several of Reich's books containing references to orgone energy being withheld. Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower, also known as the Tesla Tower, was an ambitious project by inventor Nikola Tesla Designed to demonstrate the potential of wireless power transmission, built in the early 20th century in Shoreham, New York, the tower was intended to transmit electrical energy without wires over long distances using the Earth's ionosphere. Tesla envisioned it as a way to provide free and unlimited energy to the world. Despite initial funding from investors like JP Morgan, the project was ultimately abandoned due to financial difficulties and skepticism from the scientific community. The tower was dismantled in 1917, 